Welcome to Today Matters, a short devotional in the Word of God. My name is Tim Neisler, and I'm the campus pastor out at Lakeside. As most of you know, at the beginning of the year, the pastors at Skyline Church have begun this journey through the book of Psalms. And as we focus on being rooted, it's the perfect book to start our mornings in 2022. Do me a favor. If Today Matters is a blessing to you, click that like button below or take two seconds and share your favorite videos on your Instagram or Facebook pages. One of the reasons I love this book so much is because it has so much depth. Let me try to explain. My sons, Joseph and David, who are three and four, are obsessed with a movie called Sing 2, and Sing 1 for that matter. It's an animated movie with a cast of characters and their adventures in doing what they love to do, which is singing. My boys watch this movie over and over, and every time I watch it with them, I notice something different something creative that makes me think, how did I miss that the last time I watched it? The Bible is a lot like that. I like to think of the Bible as this giant mansion with many rooms, and each book of the Bible represents a room. And instead of running through the hallways of this mansion, when we stop and spend quality time in each one of these rooms, we experience the depth we notice something different, something creative that makes us think, man, how did we miss that last time? But you'll never experience that depth if you just skim past. Back to the book of Psalms. The book was originally titled Telahim, which means praise songs in Hebrew. The English name Psalm comes from the Septuagint's Greek title Psalmo, meaning songs of praise. Keep in mind that the majority, if not all the Psalms, were performed or sang with music. Because there was no recording devices way back in the day, and because lyrics of these songs have been translated from its original language, which was Hebrew, it makes it challenging for us to really feel the depth of each lyric, each Psalm without the original melody or music. Think of your favorite worship song, if you would. Try to remove the melody from the song and just speak the lyrics. The words might be powerful, but it's just not the same when accompanied by its original music and melody. Here's the good news about the Word of God according to Hebrews 4.12. The Word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between the soul and spirit, between the joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts, and desires. In other words, there is substance and depth and wisdom in the Psalms. But we will never uncover these profound truths unless we invest in them and spend quality time in the rooms of the Bible. In and through all the Psalms, you're going to find deep expressions of worship to God. Throughout all of its pages, Psalms encourages its readers to praise God for who he is and what he's done. It brings to life the greatness of our God, affirms his faithfulness to us in times of trouble, and reminds us of the absolute inerrancy of Scripture. Not only that, but it offers us a glimpse into the hearts of devoted men and women to God, people of old, repentant, before God, and lives changed as a result of encounters with him. Turn with me, if you would, to Psalm 7, verses 1 through 5. And before we jump into the first five verses of chapter 7, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been falsely accused of something? Or maybe you've been hurt so bad that all you wanted was revenge. David wrote Psalm 7 in response to false allegations claiming he was trying to kill King Saul to seize his throne. 1 Samuel chapter 9 tells that whole story. Instead of taking matters into his own hands through war or through violence, David cries out to God in sorrow and in anguish, and all he wants is justice. Look what he says starting in chapter 7. Verse 1, I come to you for protection, O Lord my God. Save me from my persecutors. Rescue me. If you don't, they will maul me like a lion, tearing me to pieces with no one to rescue me. 
Verse three, O Lord, my God, if I've done wrong or am guilty of injustice, if I've betrayed a friend or plundered my enemy without cause, verse five, then let my enemies capture me. Let them trample me into the ground and drag my honor in the dust. I mean, can you hear his heart, his sincerity in these words? Man, I'm hoping that when I get to heaven, I can hear the original melody and music that goes with this song. This is called an imprecatory song. It's a song that invokes God's wrath and judgment against his enemies. David is saying, I've been falsely accused. I'm running for my life. Even though I'm innocent, Lord, bring me justice. But he shows us that the proper response for being falsely accused or done dirty is prayer, not revenge. Why? Because that's God's job. Look what it says in Romans 12, 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that up to God. I'm not exactly sure what you're going through today, but whatever it is, be encouraged and worship God through Psalms because today matters.